My name's Alan Hart and today I'm going to show you how to remove a radiator for decorating or how to replace a radiator as well if you were going to replace it. Um, so yeah, let's, let's have a look now. On this radiator we've got a lock shield on this side, on the left hand side and then on the right hand side we've got a thermostatic radiator valve and the head of that is just there. So I'm just going to put that back on and then we'll turn that down and then we'll also turn this side down as well. If you're going to put the head back on the radiator, if you open it fully, so it's on five on this one, put that back on, line it up so it's got like a little nut part in there that goes onto there, line that up, push that down and then tighten this nut back on, on the bottom and then just get your grips. And just nip that up. And then to turn this valve off, we then just turn that down, right down as far as it'll go. And on this valve here, when we've turned it down, it's gone down to zero on here. Some of them have like a frost setting. If you have a look on there, you need to make sure this is off, fully off. So what we've done now, we've turned one side of the radiator off. So the water that would come up on this pipe here is now turned off by this valve. And now we need to do the other side. This side, this is called a lock shield radiator valve. And what I'll do now is we'll turn that one off as well. So let's have a look. So this side here is called the lock shield valve. So that's a lock shield radiator valve. And normally you can just pull the top cap off. Sometimes your top cap will have a screw in and you might need to undo the screw, but it should just pull off like this one has. You may also have lock shields on both sides of the radiators. You might not have a thermostatic radiator valve. And if you've got a lock shield on both sides, then you just repeat this on both sides. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn this valve down here. To turn this valve off, we're gonna turn it clockwise. So just like when you turn your tap off, on your sink and you turn it off that's the same direction that we're going to do on this and we're just going to just turn the valve down what we've done now we've fully isolated this radiator from the rest of the central heating system so now we can drain this radiator down. What I've got, I've got a little jug that I'm gonna use for this one. I, I'm also, I am a plumber and I've actually got a proper um, a proper tub in van, but if, if you're at home, everybody's got a jug. So what we'll do now, I'll just start to drain the radiator down. If you've got some nice carpets, you might want to just pull your carpets back or you might want to wrap some rags around here because you may get a splash of water. So all we need to do now is get a jug underneath and then get a spanner, get a spanner to the right size on there. And then try if you can to get something on this side. Just to hold and hold that tight and down as you pull this one up. And as you pull it up, you'll see that the water will start coming out. So that's just draining down now, nice and carefully. It's all under control. Once that, um, once that stops or if that slows down, we can open the bleed point or the air tap key on this side. And what that will do, it will allow air 
into the radiator and then this will drain out even quicker once the jug gets nearly to the top you can just push your valve back on and just nip it back up just for a few minutes and then you can just take your jug away empty your jug and then put your jug back under and it's all under control then no leaks no water anywhere do not knock the radiator valve fully off because if you do you'll get loads of water coming out and it'll just splash everywhere as i say for us here it doesn't matter if you notice as well in the bottom of the radiator even though the water was all clean the bottom is it's still got some muck in there now once we've done that we've drained this side we've drained this down now we can open the bleed point as we open the bleed point it'll allow air in and then this could start flowing out again so we just need to make sure that we've got some under there I'm just going to empty this jug and then put that jug back there And then I'm just going to go to this side of the radiator and just open the bleed point. This is uh, it's jammed. This is jammed. What you do with that is you'd get some grips on there. I'll just show you that. Because this is twisting, what we need to do, we need to tighten this back in. So all we're doing here is tightening that part back into the radiator. And then, if we can get in on the video, um, hold that a bit, and then just un see if we can undo. Somebody's tighten this really tight, or it's. And as we do that, as we undo this now, that's allowing air into the system. And then I'll just show you. As we're allowing air in, this is now starting to flow more. If we allow more air in. This will go quicker. If we wanted to slow this down, we could then just close the drain off. Uh, not the drain off, the air point. If we close the air point, this will slow down. And then now if we put his hand over there and we can just empty that jug. I've just emptied the jug now. As you can see, now we've allowed air into the radiator the jug is filling a lot quicker than it did before. Once you've got as much of the water out as possible, we would then open or undo this nut on this radiator valve. And then we'll be able to lift the radiator off the wall. But before we do that, we also need to make sure we close this. And then I'll show you I'll show you a little tip so that you don't get water or sludge all over in your house. So it's stopped draining now as the radiator. I'm just going to close the air point on the top of the radiator valve, uh, top of the radiator even. And then I'm going to undo this nut. So again, same, hold your valve to protect your valve because you don't want to damage the pipe below if you damage the pipe below then obviously you're going to be in trouble then um, and then just undo that nut and on this side you're just pushing you're pushing the nut downwards so on this side you're just pushing this nut downwards and you may get a bit of water coming out of here so you might want to have just another jug So now we've disconnected both sides of the radiator and the radiator's just on the wall and now we need to get this off the wall. Now a couple of tips with this, if you are going to reuse this radiator, put something down on the floor like a dust sheet and then you can tip the radiator off onto your dust sheet and you can lift it up and then the valve, this, this bleed point, we've closed the bleed point and then what we're going to do, we're going to tip the radiator upside down. And then if there's any bits of sludge 
in the bottom of the radiator it's going to just go into the radiator rather than going onto the carpets or wherever so i'll do that now I'm not going to reuse this radiator because we're going to put underfloor heating in here um, but if you did this is what you'd want to do so gently put it down onto the floor and then you'd have your dust sheet underneath and then lift your radiator so your radiator is now upside down and no water can leak out of there now when you start going and taking it outside or into the garage or wherever you're going to take it you can now very easily decorate behind the radiator and then if you want to put the radiator back on then obviously just lift your radiator back on connect your valves up open your valves and then you'd need to go top your boiler up that's how you would remove the radiator for decorating um, and as I said to put it back on gently carefully put your radiator back on you might want to put a bit of tape or paste on the on the nut that's going to connect back on tighten that up and then you may need to go top your boiler up I have done another video on how to top a boiler up um, so hopefully um, that'll be useful for you as well um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. If you've got any questions, if you want to ask them in the comments below, and I'll try and do a follow-up video on um, answering the questions. If you'd like to subscribe, please, um, please click up here somewhere, and I'll add some more videos down here and, and, and up there as well. And thank you very much for watching.